Hi everybody, welcome to my channel at Mosaic Maria. My name is Maria and I found a really cool book at the library that I wanted to share with you and some patterns that I'm going to be doing over eh, the next couple weeks. I'm busy working but today is a day off so I just thought I would break away from two afghans I'm making and crochet and tro do a little knitting before I totally forgot how to knit, right? Because I got, I've got an afghan going in knitting, a couple of scarves going in knitting, and four afghans going in crochet right now. And um, what I really love to do on my time, my free time, is to go to the library and scope around for old books that are sort of like garage sale or thrift shop, the ones that people find in their grandma's, grandma's closet, estate houses or whatever, and they, they just get them to the library. So I found this really cool book. It didn't have a cover, so it was only 25 cents. It's old, but it comes from Make a Success of Your Knitting Using, use Pingo, Pingo in Yarn, the best in hand knitting yarn. So I'm gathering, I found, I thought I found uh, a copyright on one of these pages from 1960s. So, but the original was 1950s. And it goes all the way up to, uh, I'd say the 70s. I'd say it stops at the 70s. But there are tons of patterns in here. You can tell by the pictures, kind of, that it's 40s, 50s kind of look going on here. And some of the cartoon pictures you can see are really that those old cartoon pictures, the abbreviations, the detail to all your abbreviated stuff. It's got great techniques in here, how to read the directions, what they all mean, weaving, picking up stitches, binding, casting off, salvage stitches, all the things you could do with salvage stitches, which is like piecing your garments together. Um, sort of like what I'm doing with crochet. Uh, if I had crocheted on an extra stitch, it could be it called a salvage stitch and used in my panels to sew them together by doing a duplicate stitch. And then it goes over embroidery and duplicate stitches in here, increases and decreases. Um, this makes me think this picture that it's probably early 80s. I don't know. Um, cross stitches, decrease stitches, yarn overs, all those twisty weird things um, that people get. Fancy stitches, drop stitches, simple stitches. It's really, it even goes over posture when you're knitting, which I think is so important for crochet and knitting. And you want your elbows at your side and your shoulders not to be touching your ears. But see, even these pictures you can tell, really old and quaint and those like yesteryear washing, blocking, rinsing, drying, how to test your yarn so it doesn't bleed. All those things you see, like mending hand knitted stuff, um, buttonholes, pockets. Adding a border on afterwards, picking up stitches. I love this picture. I just want to caption that. It's so great. Smocks, socks, <laughs> you name it. Color work, um, eccentric, your color work here. I'm thinking 60s, 70s, that looks like to me. Letters, you could personalize it. Embroidered stitches, woven. Carrying yarn. It's an interesting picture. Looks like 70s, 80s. Anyway, so I found a really interesting one. As soon as I got home, I went through all of them. And I think I've seen some of these in Knitting Treasury and out online and uh, New Stitch of the Day or Knit a Stitch or Stitch for the Day or whatever. But some of them I have never seen before, like this one, horizontal open work. 
I have made something similar called the porcupine pattern. And basically what you're doing here is you're doing a multiple of two and and then two salvage stitches. Your salvage stitches are your side stitches. And you would just stay in pattern with them or uh, what it tells you to do. Um, it, but if you wanted to make a better, more of a border, you could add as many stitches as you wanted on. So with this particular pattern, you're, I'm thinking this would make a beautiful scarf. And then if you wanted to crochet and edge in, you could just crochet along the side and the bottom. So I have 22 stitches here. I keep dropping one stitch and having to pick it back up. But you're basically just going to knit six rows to begin with and in between. And these would be called your stabilizing rows. And then your action rows would be four rows where all the, the these fancy little stitches are going on that make the open lace or the open work you see. So I'm using a 7.0 bamboo needle. You don't have to use the kind I'm using. You can use a circular and just work flat. You can use aluminum, you can use a DPN if it's big enough. A, like a double pointed needle. You don't have to use a knitting needle. And I'm thinking if I had done 32 stitches, 30 for my project and two side stitches or 32 and made it 28 stitches and two two side stitches on each side four side stitches for a border that would be fine too for a scarf it would be perfect and this just comes together so easy so I'm going to show it to you so you just knitting six rows. Any cast on you like. I did a long tail cast on. And I'm using Cotton Candy Pink Red Hot Super Saver for medium worsted weight yarn. And you could change up these knit rows. You don't have to do six rows. You could do you could do six rows of knitting and then six rows of purling. You could do three rows of knitting, four. It doesn't have to be six, it could be five. And you actually could repeat the action rows more if you wanted to, or less. If you can do two rows. I'll show you what it looks like at two rows and then four. And if you really wanted to get fancy with it, fancy schmancy, you could alternate how many rows you do of your action rows with the fancy stitches and alternate how many you do of your stabilizing rows, which would just be knitting. So that it really has a lot of optical illusion shape and movement going on with it. This would make a darling and really elegant, uh, simple elegance, but it's really pretty, um, scarf for the autumn. If you had a variegated yarn, like a Mandela Lion brand that maybe sh uh, blocks out into different colors or ombres out, or even shawl in a ball or a fleck yarn. This could be worn all through autumn, those crisp days, and winter. You could definitely drop down your needle size to even a 5.0 or 6.0. I'm using a 7.0 because all my knitting needles are starting to get bent. So I'm going to be getting a few more new ones in my 4.5 to 6.0. So 
So I mean you could do four rows instead of six. It won't change the pattern any. It won't I mean it won't disturb it. Excuse my TV, I have the news on in the background, which I thought was something important happening. Some plane fell out of the sky somewhere. It had something to do with Russia, I didn't know what it was. And but they switched over to Rudy Giuliani getting arrested and it's been nonstop news and noise, so I haven't had a chance to turn it yet to music, which I'm going to do any minute. I'm sick of it. I'm sick of it. Sick of it. I think um, all reporters could do is just keep talking about the same thing over and over again. Like, oh, hey, Rudy, care to say anything? No, he doesn't care to say anything other than he's innocent. And then I switched to another channel and everybody was talking about the debate, which is going to start any minute, that Donald Trump is not going to be at. But he did give a tape, interview tape, to Carlson Tucker, who used to be at Fox. Just so strange, but not really. This whole campaign has become these indictments. And it seems to be working. got to wonder if the Democrats really do want Donald back. They really do. I think they do. Okay. Enough politics talk. So this is row four. So I just have two more rows to go and then I can show you the action stitches. Which actually if you see two rows you know how to do it. So you know how to knit. What I'm saying is you could stop at four. Do six, four, 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 six, six. You could do that. Alternate your knit rows. The number of ones you do. I would just try to keep it all the same variation pattern. So you're not all willy nilly all over the place like four, six, three, two, one. <laughs> you know, like, not like that. Yeah, I'm thinking a variegated or a fleck yarn or an ombre yarn for autumn. This would be a perfect scarf gift for somebody. Winter too, it's just enough. Not going to be cumbersome and make you nuts. You know, people just want a little wrap around their neck to keep warm. So with a little bit of open work going on here, it's just really pretty. I think I would keep it the six knit in between, but you could, because it's reversible. And that's another thing. What it is on one side, it is on the other. So there's no right or wrong, which is really nice. So you could tie it as a skirt, wrap it. And it's not gonna look like you're on the wrong side. So that's kinda cool. Really simple, simple. Yeah, if I find a book like this at a garage sale or a um, yard sale, um, this time of year, autumn, there's tons of yard sales. I go straight for the books. And even if they're moldy, if there's ton of, or they're yellowing, if there's a ton of really cool 
knitting or crochet patterns that I've never seen even out on the internet, I will go look and grab them. I'm currently looking for Victorian, not so much vintage as Victorian, but I like retro, anything from 1940s to 1970s is kind of my my jive, kind of what I go for all the time. And then Victorian and the classics. Okay, so this is really, really pretty. So this is how we do it. I got my six rows of knit, or maybe I got five, I don't know. No, I got six. Okay, so we're going to knit our side salvage stitch. This would be row seven. Like I said, you can make as many salvage stitches as you wanted if you wanted to make a border. And then you're going to yarn over and knit two together. Yarn over again, knit two together. Yarning over this needle, knitting two together. Yarning over, knitting two together. Yarning over, Running over, I don't know why this keeps happening, but I think I'm like down one stitch. I think I'm at like twenty one. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 21, 22, 23. Now I got an extra stitch. So, yarn over. I'm going to knit these two together. Let's see what I end up with. I've been going up one and two stitches lately. Let me see. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 16, 18, 20, 22. I'm still at 23. I'm going to get rid of one stitch. I am going to knit these two together again. <laughs> Somewhere along the line I knit a split. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Okay, so it should be going down. Alright, so row eight you knit your side stitch. I knit two together because I had an extra stitch. You yarn over and you purl two together. Yarn over and you purl two together. And when I purl, I purl Mediterranean English style, so um, if it looks strange to you the way I'm purling, it's just because I'm not going American English. I could try that, but I always drop mine. Let me try. Here we go like this. Yarn in the front. Boom. And it's okay, I just don't like it. <laughs> So you're just yarning over and purling two together. It's really pretty. Yarn over, purl two together, and you should have one stitch left to knit. And I do, so I'm going to knit it. So we turn.
So now, I mean that one. We yarn over and we knit two together again. Yarn over, knit two together. Yarn over. Yarn over. Yarn over. I don't wrap my hand, I used to, but I don't anymore because it gives my hand a cramp. I end up cramping. So, but you could wrap your hand. I'll show you how to do that if you don't have issues with hand spazzing. I do. And knit your last stitch. So darn pretty. Okay. And then we knit our salvage stitch. And we yarn over and purl two together. And over. I will say for those of us that don't like purling sometimes, you might not like this pattern if you don't like purling because you have to purl with it. That's what makes it look pretty. Personally, I love purling most of the time. Once you get past having to purl three or four stitches together, I don't like it either, but I've done a few where you have to purl into the back loop, two together, and those are hard. Um, but I really think the purl stitch is what makes knit knitting come alive and look pretty and fanciful and gives it a lot of shape and movement. Straight on knitting is pretty flat. And then we knit our last stitch. That is it. That is the whole pattern. Then you just knit again. Only, I would say what's important is you're knitting yarn overs on this first row, so you have to remember to do that. So one, two, and you'll see a yarn over. There's a yarn over, it's not connected. It's just hanging like that. You gotta get in there and make sure you really knit it. It's closed off. Otherwise you won't have your sh shape that you need. So knit your yarn overs on that next one and then your stitches. See, yarn over, stitch. Yarn over, stitch. Yarn over. That's how you're getting that open weave kind of look going on there. Only other thing I would add to this is be sure you don't drop your yarn overs that they're actually closed off. Looks like that's where I had knit two together there. 
put that in one. All right. Then just keep going. Oh, I'll show you how to do Mediterranean. Although Mediterranean is a little bit tighter, it works. You just kind of wrap your your pinky, come in, pinky, pick up your yarn, wrap around your ring finger under your um, index finger around your forefinger. And your forefinger becomes your guide that holds your yarn. And your pinky becomes your feed. You just kind of do this. So you come in like this. And I always Mediterranean uh, knit much tighter than uh, American English. But you don't come off the hook. When you feel your yarn's getting tight, just flick and push your yarn up and hold your yarn taut again and keep back so you don't come off the needle but it's a more snug uh, knit than English American it's Mediterranean some people call it Mediterranean, European, continental, speed knitting. I don't find this any more speedy. But I think for me, um, if I have a lot of knit rows I have to do, I'll try to do a looser knit like this because it, it is nice. But I won't like do one row in English and one row in uh, see because it's much tighter to get into now when I go to get in those stitches they're going to be tight don't know why that is but I always choose to watch how hard it's going to be now for me when, when I knit I choose to always knit American English and Pearl uh, Mediterranean European because I just find these stitches harder to get into, even though it's working out fine now. I could, could keep going, but <laughs> they're kind of snug. And you don't have to wrap your whole hand if you want to. You can just wrap your pinky in this here. So it's kind of like um, some people call it knit or picking, being a knit picker of your yarn. So what I love about these books is it talks about prop posture and I am somebody that has ended up with tendonitis in both of my elbows, tendonitis in my wrist, stiff neck, the whole bit, frozen shoulder. When I do marathon knitting and crochet, I really wipe my body out. So right now having four things on the hook and two things on needles is crushing my shoulders, everything. It is repetitive and you got to be in the right position to do it or you do feel it. So typically what I hear people say, like I automatically end up, I'm shaking my shoulders out right now, I automatically end up with my shoulders up to my ears no matter how I sit. So for me what works good is standing when I knit, but if I'm doing a tutorial I can't really stand um, and get my hands in there in the camera so I'm sitting but I will be stretching in a minute when I get off this <laughs> done with this I will be stretching so I'm going back to English here so I say just stop do some shoulder shrugs um, neck rolls shake your wrists out stretch your fingers 
even your jaw, you might realize you're holding your jaw tight. If you're a tense knitter, watch your tension. You know, do stretch breaks. When I'm getting into basically Christmas season right now, so I'm making gifts and stuff. Um, I am happy to be able to go to work because I get to stretch and lift when I'm working on the ovens and kettling. I get to uh, lift and uh, throw bagels on a board and season them and put them in the oven and stretch. The ovens go up and down, they move around, so I get to stretch a lot. And then putting them in the bins where I work, I get to stretch a lot. <laughs> Um, so I get to actually do a lot of stretching and lifting um, on Tuesday. Well, yeah, Tuesday, Thursdays, and Sundays I do. But then there are some days where I'm just doing repetitive, like I'm making cream cheese, and I'm just mixing, and that movement is a very strange movement because you're working with a KitchenAid, you're mixing up your cream cheese with the ingredients, and then you're measuring it into... Um, containers and that twisting and scooping is a repetitive thing that you just got to shake your arms out and your wrists and all that so with knitting I keep hearing people talk about posture with knitting you just kind of got to relax your elbows bring your shoulders down and be consciously aware of that or you will feel it later you'll feel it in a couple days be like oh I even had a um, cyst on my arm for about two months that was from crocheting too much I've seen some of the best tutorialists out here be taken out by crochet and knitting injuries you don't realize it until you're twisting yourself into a ball every day to do tutorials and then do the projects. So be kind to your circulation, your bones and your ligaments and your tendons and your joints, your spine, your neck, your elbows, your wrists, your fingers, your eyes. Oh my God, your eyes. <laughs> yeah. If you're squinting looking at a pattern, get yourself a little magnifying glass. You know, do things to make it like right now my shoulders are up to my ears again. I have to keep bringing them down. That's the only way it's going to stay a relaxing hobby that you can do for the endurance. Otherwise it does wear and tear on you. Okay. So, like I said in my other video, I do like kind of like assembly line knitting. I'll get like one thing going in one color another thing in another color so I mean this would be if you wanted to do like maybe a less amount of knitting and then go back to your six up here you could if you wanted to I think if you switch to pearl it would look really strange I don't know what's going on there what is going on there I got a twisted stitch so what I would do is come in with um, maybe a white yarn for this and I'm using a 6.0 J hook here I would use a, a yarn lighter or darker maybe a medium shade or maybe even the same thing I don't know you, you could just knit the border right in it with more salvage stitches but if you didn't do that you could crochet a border in and one that I'm thinking is really pretty is kind of like Picos um, like chain two come down into that and bring it through and then maybe knit or crochet, single crochet, maybe th three. Oops. Then right here, chain 
two or th chain three and come down into this one here and slip stitch it. And single crochet. I'm thinking the picots look really pretty, probably just single crochet two, not three, because it looks weird. So two. And then chain two and come down into the bottom chain here. Pico and the next one, like that. That looks better. Just little tiny picots. So one, two, that pico over there looks really bad. Chain two. So we've got these little side stitches. I think it looks pretty all the way up. Little side stitches, kind of. Or you could just single crochet. Or you could do half double crochets. Or like I said, you could just add on more salvage stitches and you would have a scarf. I think a single crochet looks good. If you just heard my stomach growl, I apologize. kind of on this raw food diet I've been doing. <laughs> I ate way too much and I decided to go on a raw food diet for a while, of just veggies. That looks really pretty actually. Yeah, I like just the um, little border. You can keep it all the same color, whatever. Just, I just think this is really beautiful as a scarf. But to even up the sides, I would say, just make sure your salvage stitches don't go missing. I think what happened there is I knit two together on the end, which you should probably never do. If you're gonna decrease, you should probably never knit two together or increase at the edge, because it just looks funny, right? So that's what I wanted to show everyone. It's really pretty, pretty. Let me see if I can put it against something so you can really see what it looks like. There we go. And I mean, the natural wave in it kind of looks cool for a scar. I just think it's really beautiful. So it's called Horizontal Open Work.